Well, I broke in the league. It was 86 was my first pro camp, pro camp. And, uh, you know, like you're right. You play junior hockey and you, you put points up because everybody does, right? It's junior hockey. I mean, it's, um, even especially back then, I think more than now, I think it, you know, it was easier for a guy like me to score some goals and, and make some plays back then. The game was different than it is now, obviously. I think it's tougher now, but you know, my first pro camp, I come into camp there and, um, I was pretty nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, they got Dave Brown and all these guys, right. on, you know, in Philly and you got Mike Keenan, uh, coaching that team. So, you know, we had a lot of, um, scrimmages, like it was a lot of, uh, scrimmaging back then compared to nowadays. Right. Yeah. And, you know, camps were like two a days and, uh, probably running two weeks on the ice. Maybe not that long, but around there, you'd, you'd scrimmage or practice for a week and a bit before you played an exhibition game. And I was right out of the gate, first camp, first game, you know, I'm fighting. I don't even know who I'm fighting. Like, <laughs> I remember, uh, I, um, Eddie Hospar had a couple fights with him and, and I'm on the training table, um, after the scrimmage and Eddie's right there. Yeah. Good job, kid. That was a good fight out there. We had, it's like nothing, you know, but the one guy I had on my team at that time, we all have these teams. There's like four teams. I had Brad McCrimmon, who was unreal guy. Um, the late Brad McCrimmon, um, he was sitting beside me. He made me feel so good and comfortable with everything going on. Cause I was nervous. I'll tell you what, you know? <laughs> but he was, he was a great guy. And, um, you know, he was the kind of guy that just made you feel good about everything. So yeah. were you, were you a fighter in junior? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I mean, I ended up, I scored 30 goals all my last year and stuff, yeah. but, uh, yeah, you know, that's what I did. Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. But you get to pro hockey, you got to understand how you're going to stay there. That's right. hundred percent. Right. Right. What you, what you want to do? Like, you may not like your job. Not, I'm not, I'm, I don't know too many guys that really like that kind of job, but it's a job and you got to go and do it. And, yeah. You know, it feels good to do it for your teammates, obviously, but, uh, that's the way you make a living. You did it for eight yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, seven. I mean, yeah, eighteen years. That's what it boils years. down to, really. I mean, consistency, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you were as consistent as you, they got. You were a gamer, you and could have uh, probably, like, you know, if you think about it, you probably could have made. I could have made myself a better player if you really focused on it and maybe pushed yourself, or you know, took that chance a little bit to make yourself better. Yeah, which some guys did. Yeah, know? there was guys. That's a hard one. I least. left to home at sixteen, went and played junior A hockey in Williams Lake, BC. It was like um, that league wasn't major junior. It was like a step below. Um, so I went and played there, and it was great. Like uh, our coach, was he was not so. His name is John Van Hornick, and he's a great guy. Uh, I'm still friends with him today. But um, so he he really is the reason that I probably made it to pro hockey. Like he he groomed me into what I had to be and, and how to become that and you know, did a lot of uh, boxing and all this stuff. So anyways, at the end of the season, he comes up to me and he goes, what's your plans? I'm like, well, I'm going to go back home to Callahoo, my hometown, and probably play some baseball in the summer and, you know, work and hang out and whatever. And he goes, nah. He goes, I got a ball team here you can play for, but I got this, so you think you're tough, and I want you to fight in it. <laughs> and I said, really? With men. So, with oh, grown yeah. men. This was like a legit and I go, all right, so what's the plan? Who's going to train me? And he goes, I am. <laughs> I go, he goes, yep, you'll come over to my house every day. We'll go down in my basement, put the gloves on, and we'll spar and, and train, and then my wife will feed you and you can go, go home. I said, all right, sounds good. Like, I'm, you know, I'm just, I did whatever he said. Right, yeah. yeah. So I go over there, and we put the gloves on, and we got, that's it. There's no headgear, there's no mouthpieces, there's nothing. Put the gloves on and, like, fight. And this guy was tough as nails. Like he was, a, he actually played in that, uh, you know, slap shot, the movie they called the Iron League. He yeah. actually played in that league. Wow. And, Boy. and, uh, so he was a tough guy himself. <laughs> so we'd, we'd go at it down there. I don't know how many times a week, but <laughs> ended up going in that. So you think you're tough. And I ended up fighting it and I ended up winning it and, wow. uh, won a thousand dollars. 16 years old? Then, eh? That was a lot of money then. Oh yeah. Right. What happened in that you're 16 years fight. old, man. Yeah. The final fight got a little yeah, crazy. Yeah, got a little it? crazy. I fought this big biker, and, you know, he wasn't, you know, he was just a biker. Like, he's a big guy, and tough, you know, and I could fight. I was a pretty good boxer, and I was I was giving it to him pretty good, and he kicked me in the nuts. And not only once, and I thought, the, you know, they'd stop the fight or kick him out, I was hoping. No, keep her going. <laughs> Look, 
he kicked me again. <laughs> and then in between, as he kicked me again, through the ring comes my coach. And there's all these people in the ring, they're kind of going at it like he's trying to fight the guy. You know, it was like a brawl. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, are you kidding me? And uh, they just kept it going, though. Never stopped it. And I ended up fighting him, and, and uh, I won won the thing. So it was, it was pretty funny. I mean, uh, to think back of that, like, it was, like, unreal. Like, 16 years old to be able to do that. Right. You know? That's so awesome. I played with Bird here. I grew, yep, we we right. broke into Philly together. We played in Hershey together. We lived together. I mean, he had Bird, a couple screws loose, maybe. He's the craziest human being I've ever <laughs> yeah, yeah. been around. He was really? not he even was nuts. close anywhere, too. Like golf course anywhere. There was always something going on, an altercation. <laughs> and <laughs> something. Like, no matter what, he found trouble. Or he looked for it more than yeah. anything. But, yeah. So we're playing Quebec Nordiques, and they had that Kevin Kaminsky on that team too. So I ended up playing with Killer, right Kevin Wash, Kaminsky. Right, his nickname's yeah. Killer. I played with him and Wash too. Great guy. And I'm on Calgary. Doug Risebrow is the coach and the GM. And there's a brawl, like a five on five going on. And Bird Dog and Kaminsky are out there. And I'm on the bench watching. And I'm like, look at these two clowns. <laughs> and they're going. Everybody's going at it. And Bird comes by our bench, and he goes, "Who's next?" And this is in that old Quebec Coliseum. And I'm laughing because I know him, but everybody else is like scared. Like, yeah. he's an intimidating guy, he's a big guy. And Doug Reisbach goes, who's that? Who's <laughs> go, that? Greg Smythe is his name. Yeah. Well, wh- where'd he come from? And I told him, I said, well, I played with him in Philly and stuff like that. And told him his whole deal and all that stuff. And he trades for him the next week. <laughs> he's a oh, oh, yeah. Moved right in with me. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets there. And um, like two days later or whatever, you know, we're sitting at home. And he goes, let's go to the bar and shoot some pool. I said, all right. So we go to a bar down the road a little ways. And, you know, and I don't know if it is in the United States they do this, but in Canada you got to write your name up, like on the yep. board, who's up and all that. So he goes to the bartender and he goes, give me a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> the bartender goes, I can't do that, you know. And he goes, what do you mean? Just give me a bottle of Jack Daniels and a glass of ice. Can't do that. We'll pour it in that pitcher. Pour a bottle of JD in a pitcher, give him the pitcher and a glass of ice. Walks over to the pool tables, puts it down, sees all the names up, races them. Bird dog versus chief. Then he goes over to the pool table and he says, boys, you're done. Wow. (laughs) Grabbed all the balls and wrapped them up. These guys are looking. Do they want to go? Oh, they got a little upset, but I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Bird and I shot pool till he was done drinking his JD, and we went home. Wow, it was unreal. <laughs> I had to, I had to deal with that all the time with him. With him, oh man! But Definitely. he was a great guy, genuine guy. Do anything for you, yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, guys loved him. He guys was, loved. Him.